Hello everybody, my name is Hank de Berg. I'm a professor at the University of Sheffield and the director of the Prokhorov Center. I'm here in Sheffield Cathedral to interview the Dean of Sheffield Cathedral, Peter Bradley, and Dermot McCulloch, Professor of the History of the Church at Oxford University. Peter, if I could start with you, can you tell me a little bit about your career, or maybe I should say your calling? How, do you, how did you come to be Dean of Sheffield Cathedral? Well, I've served in parishes um, largely in the south of England and as a university chaplain for five years. And uh, I was sort of mildly headhunted here, um, I think because there were very significant financial issues and I have a lot of experience in raising money. Uh, Dermot, you're, you're a university professor, but you almost became a priest. Uh, why did you not opt for the priesthood? Uh, well, this is the attitude of the Church of England to homosexuality, about which I was outspoken. In fact, couldn't see a problem. Uh, the Church could, so it was clearly not the right time to go on. I'm a deacon of the Church of England. That's where I stand. And who knows what the future holds for me or the Church. Yes, I was going to ask, so how, what role does religion play in your life now? Do you, do you still see yourself as a, as a as a believer, is faith still important to you? Well, of course. I mean, it, it, to be cynical, it also pays me. I'm in the Theology and Religion Faculty of, the, of Oxford University, uh, and most of my waking hours uh, are about considering church history. Uh, but uh, faith is inescapable for me, whatever faith means. Mm -hmm. You've spoken about uh, Christianity and the history of Christianity. You've published on, on, on that. How do you see God? I know it's an incredibly difficult question, but do you, is God for you a personal God, a transcendence? None of these terms work. Uh, they are irrelevant to God, who uh, is not even is. Uh, we have to use this language because we haven't got any other, but all the terms for God are uh, secondary, they're analogy, they're images, and we can't get away from that fact. And actually the best thing to do uh, with God is to be utterly silent in the presence of God. Christianity discovered this a long time ago, but uh, it had already been discovered by the great world religions, Buddhism, for instance. Even Judaism, which is an extraordinarily loquacious religion, in the end realized that silence was actually one of the ways of getting to God. And Christianity inherited that, and it also inherited this idea uh, that you can't describe God from uh, Greek religion as well, which was so full of images of God that in the end its greatest minds realised that God is beyond that. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Peter, there have been a lot of critics of uh, religion who have not exactly been silent, who in fact have been very vocal. So how do you respond to people like um, uh, Christopher Hitchens or Sam Harris or Richard Dawkins who say, I've looked around me, haven't seen any God. I've looked through a microscope, no God. Looked through a telescope, no God. So assuming that there is a God is a little bit like assuming that there is a flying spaghetti monster. If someone says that to you, how do you respond? Well, um, I think that the analysis of God in those writers is actually woefully inadequate. I, very few Christians have ever believed what they are saying Christians believed. So firstly, it needs, uh, we need to get our, our um, terms right. Mm -hmm. um, then, um, for me, um, faith in God provides a sort of profound meaning for life. It, it allows me to interpret lots of other things in a way that has weight. And, um, I, I don't think that you can argue people into that. It's a discovery you make or you don't make. Um, and so I find a lot of that um, really rather bitter uh, type of criticism. diatribe, uh, sort of unfruitful. Now that doesn't mean that there aren't very important criticisms to be made both of Christianity as such and also of how Christian churches and particularly mine have responded to God, but that's a sort of subtly different issue, I think. Do you think a good way to look at it is in terms of 
language games, which is a term used by the philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein, so that you might say that the criticism put forward uh, by people like Richard Dawkins is a bit like a husband says to his wife, you're a rose, and then Richard Dawkins, the biologist, comes along and says, actually, uh, can I just point out to you, your wife is not a rose because the physical characteristic of, characteristics of a rose are as follows. If that happens, we say, well, that's not what that kind of, uh, the, what the language of, lo of love wants to express. And by the same token, can't, don't you th can't one say or shouldn't one say, you can't measure the language of religion by the language and the standards of science? Yes, but actually it's a sort of rather deeper thing than that, isn't it? People often talk about God as if God was an object in the room, which mm -hmm. could be there or not there. That's a, that is a profoundly impoverished way of talking about God, and that sense, you know, Wittgenstein has something really helpful to say in that we need to discover the grammar of this, uh, of this area of discourse. But um, I won't say it's also not simply an area of discourse, it's a response a response to a particular experience that people have. Or a calling forth or whatever, yes. Mm -hmm. So, for example, when you, when you do a sermon about Genesis, about uh, uh, the creation, what is the kind of thing you're trying to get across? Because D Dawkins seems to assume it's some kind of rather simplistic biology lesson. Well, I don't think I've ever preached on the book of Genesis. Have you not? No, mm. I've translated it, but I haven't tra if I haven't you, preached if it. You did, Were I to you, do so? Yes, what would you um, say? The, the, it, I find it simply incredible that uh, contemporary Christians, a few contemporary Christians, find it hard to um, uh, live in a world of science and the world of Genesis. The world, Genesis is answering different questions. It's a, a way of doing philosophy and theology through myth. So what it says is in some ways true, and in some ways is, is um, it, it's really rather subtle, um, and it's not a scientific account of uh, uh, how human beings came to be, and never pretends to be. There's, there's, I would want to encourage um, as rich and as deep an account as possible of evolution, say, and then, and then alongside that, a similarly rich account of faith. I don't see an immediate um, uh, contradiction there. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much. In the second part of this interview, I'll ask you about the church's attitude to gay marriage and uh, the ordination of women. <laughs>